Hello everyone and welcome to the other semi-final match that I said that we will cover. It is Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana and uh, this is the Armageddon game and it's very interesting how it got the Armageddon game because uh, first two games ended in a draw and then Magnus won the third game and uh, going into game four he said that he only needs a draw uh, and he wins the match and it's like playing Armageddon because he had the black pieces in game four. He, had, he said it's like uh, playing Armageddon but with having the full 15 minutes on the clock uh, and you only need a draw with the black pieces. However, Fabi uh, completely destroyed him in that game and he was able to force the Armageddon game. So now uh, Magnus gets white in Armageddon as Fabi outbid him by two seconds. Magnus bid 10 minutes on the clock and Fabi bid 9 minutes and 58 seconds. So now Fabi gets to play for a draw this game. Let's see if now Magnus can retaliate as now to win the match he needs to win with the white pieces. And uh, since he won the first match, uh, if the second one uh, is won by Fabi, then they go into a third one like Wesley had against uh, Noderbeck. So uh, that being said, Let's check out uh, the two old rivals meet again, uh, how it went. Magnus with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. The Rui Lopez is on the board. We have a6, Morphe's defense. Probably you'd expect uh, the Berlin defense as uh, Fabi only needs a draw, but Fabi knows that Magnus knows that Fabi only needs a draw, so probably Magnus has some, some specialty in store for the Berlin defense. So he looks for his chances in Morphe's defense. We have bishop to e4. Knight to f6, we have castles and knight captures on e4. So, standard uh, open Rui Lopez, we have pawn to d4 first, uh, and now b5 is standard, bishop to e7 a little less played, but still considered the main line. We have rook to e1, attacks the knight, and now pawn to b5, attacking the bishop. Bishop to a4, even though you could go for the trade um, uh, with, with rook captures on e, uh, e4, then d5, it's a very well-known line. Uh, it's best to just move the bishop, bishop to b3, and now pawn to d5. We have d captures on e5, and bishop to e6. And okay, it's a, a very standard game. We have c3, and now castles. We have h3. Uh, queen to d7 and now bishop to c2 and this is a very interesting position because the position was already reached in 2006 uh, between two 1900 players uh, where knight b to d2 was played and interestingly knight b to d2 is sort of the uh, top move recommended by the engine but here uh, we have bishop to c2 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So how does uh, Fabi meet this idea? Well of course he has to do something uh, about uh, the knight. So he goes rook a to d8. He says all right, if you want, you can capture uh, on e4. It's not a problem because if you capture, I can just capture back. Uh, and if queens get traded over the board, let's say queen captures, uh, rook captures, your knight is now hanging. And once you move the knight, I can collect on e5. So that's the idea behind rook a to d8. So Magnus just continues developing knight b to d2. And now knight, uh, knight captures on d2, queen captures on d2, and bishop to f5. Fabi happily offers a trade of bishops. And Magnus not only accepts the trade of bishops, but also offers the immediate trade of queen. Queens, queen to f4, and Fabi says, all right, let's trade, uh, let's see you win this endgame. Uh, and he executes pawn to d4, which means that further trades uh, are coming. But now Magnus plays rook a to c1, and he says the real weakness in your position is the c7 pawn, and that's what we are playing against. So Fabi quickly uh, tries to trade off the c7 pawn for the a2 pawn. He plays d captures on c3, rook captures, and knight to b4. Says, okay, you capture here, I'm going to capture on a2. Okay, rook captures on c7, uh, and now we have rook f to e8. Now... Uh, uh, it seems like uh, 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 before capturing on c7, like uh, let's say you play pawn to a3. You you want to save your pawn? Uh, sorry about that. My my phone is <laughs> listening to what I'm saying. Uh, then knight to d5 just uh, wins you the game. Of course, you cannot allow that. So that's why Magnus first captured on c7. But now Fabi has to decide because now if he goes knight to d5, yes, he attacks the rook and the bishop, but the rook just moves. And now if you capture the bishop, also rook captures the, the bishop on e7. So instead, after rook captures here, rook f to e8, defending the bishop, and now bishop to g5. Magnus offers a trade of bishops. Fabi goes for it, uh, captures, captures, and this is the position now. Magnus, for the moment, up a pawn. How can he play this? Well, it's an extremely complicated position. And while Fabi still does have 5 minutes and 49 seconds uh, on the clock, he does not find the correct continuation. I'm going to show it to you because it's... Um... Uh, it's a lot of fun. Not not capturing on a2. The idea is knight to d3. You go after the rook and the e5 pawn. So that's uh, the idea here. And now if you move the rook, of course, just knight captures on e5. But the real line to calculate is pawn to e6. 
So how do you meet uh, with this? Of course, now you can't touch the rook because this is just uh, crushing. So you have to play pawn to f6 and now e7 attacks the rook here. And once the rook moves, now you move the rook and you attack the knight. So now you collect on b2. Okay, you win your pawn back. Uh, and now rook to d8. And the only way to play this is, um, uh, well, let's you take the knight. If you take the knight, you're just going to lose the game. Rook c to d7, and there's no defense here. Just rook captures, followed by the other rook coming to d8. Even king to f7 doesn't help. You're just going to capture here, and then after rook captures, rook to d8, and now you're either trading rooks or you bring a queen into the game. So, of course, completely winning. So the only move you will have here after this rook to d8 move uh, is not capturing the knight. It's actually just going for uh, a capture. Rook captures here. And once uh, the queen comes into the game, you will capture the queen. And now you will bring the knight to e6, pressuring the g7 pawn. And now after, let's say, rook to d1, checking h2, you'll play g5, save your pawn, and you're still in the game. So that's that's the idea. However, after this knight to g5 move capture, Fabi did not go for knight to d3 first. He went for f6 first. And it seems like, okay, same idea. You can play knight to d3 later on. But now he's just going to be down a move. And now Magnus plays knight to f7. And the problem is it comes with an attack on the rook. So you're not in time to bring the knight to d3. So Fabi first played rook to d2. But now Magnus played pawn to e6. And the knight is defended. The pawn is defended. Everything is defended. Uh, what do you play? Uh, it's a very, very tricky position and not, not a lot of good moves here. Uh, pretty much everything, not pretty much everything loses for Fabi here. It's only a matter of how uh, Magnus does it. So here, pawn to h5 was played. Uh, and now there's, uh, well, there are many good moves, but there's one move that's really crushing for Magnus. So feel free to pause the video and try to spot it. It's not an easy one to find. So if you commit, really do commit. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, beautiful move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to e4. That's the move. Rook to e4 as it comes with a tempo on the knight. And next you want to uh, bust open the position with g4. Then you can play something like captures. And then you have uh, incredible pressure on that g7 pawn. So that's the way to do it uh, with losing as little time as possible. So not a lot of uh, great ideas for Fabi here. He played knight captures on a2. Uh, and now, well, you could go for g4. The move that I described, Magnus goes for rook to c6 first. Uh, this also defends the e6 pawn. And he wants to collect on a6. So it's a bit of a different way of doing things things, but still uh, very much um, uh, w works. And if you play pawn to a5 to try and defend the pawn, then just knight d6. Also one of the reasons why rook to c6 was so strong, because it uh, defends the knight here. Uh, the rook is attacked, and once you move the rook, just knight f5, and once you move the rook, now rook to c7. And that's all there is. The pawn is attacked. If you play g5, now just knight to g7, attacks the rook, you move the rook, and then e7, e8 wins the game. So uh, also one of the ideas behind rook to c6. So Fabio, of course, cannot allow this. He played rook to d5 and now magnus could go for the exact same idea with knight to d6 but uh magnus just now collects on a6 with an attack on the knight knight to c1 and now rook to d6 he wants to trade rooks here so rook to c5 fabi avoids it and now rook to d7 uh, we have knight to b3, and now knight to d6, attacking the rook, guarding the e7 a square with the rook, and now e7, e8 are coming. So here, Fabi tries rook to c1 check, one last tactical idea, king to h2, and now knight to d2, trying to offer his rook seemingly for the rook on e4, but not really. Here would be a terrible, terrible mistake to go after the rook, because if Magnus captures the rook, Fabi doesn't take an e4, Fabi plays knight f1 check, and now uh, it, it, it's a draw. Uh, king to g1. Knight to g3 check forces a perpetual king h2. Again, a g3 is covered. You have to go back. Uh, Fabi would win the Armageddon game with a nice perpetual here. So Magnus played pawn to g4. He freed up the g3 and g2 squares for his king. And now not a lot for Fabi to do here. He played knight captures on e4, but now just knight captures on e8, going after the g7 pawn as well. So rook to e1, you have to put the rook behind the passed pawn. And now even pawn to e7, not to, uh, even rushing with captures on g7. Pawn to f5, and now we have pawn to g5 by Magnus. And the problem is, if you play g6 now, uh, then the problem is knight to f6 check. The knight is attacked, or if you if you just move the king, then just e8 queen. And if you trade, you get a nice defended pass pawn here. If king f7, just rook d8 followed by rook to f8 check, and then uh, promoting the pawn to a queen will uh, will get the job done. So if I played knight captures on g5, but now Magnus played knight captures on g7. And he was in this position on move 36. 
6 that Fabiana Coruana resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. I finished the game with 18 seconds on the clock, but uh, the position is um, uh, just a dead loss. Uh, th there's no defense against the D8. It will win the rook. You, uh, and um, uh, if you capture the knight, of course, uh, E8 queen comes with a check from the rook here, and you will very, very quickly get checkmated. It's something like queen to F8 check. You're going to go here, queen to D6 check. You have to go to E4, rook E7 check, king F3, and let's say queen to G3 will be checkmated, but any of the other lines also get the, the black king checkmated. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Fabi, uh, winning that game four, uh, uh, forcing uh, forcing an Armageddon game, and he was very very close to actually drawing, but he uh, here uh, it, it was all uh, you know uh, it, it all came down to this f6 pawn push. Uh, it's always you know uh, whenever you want to play f6, regardless of the position, just remember the old saying uh, you know uh, never play pawn to f6, even if it's the strongest move, it's still not. Uh, because here it is, but you have to first play knight to d3. But of course, yeah, it's Armageddon, a little time on the clock. Uh, who who can see everything? Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Magnus wins the semifinals, and he will now face Wesley. So in the finals, uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be, it's, it's always great when Magnus faces Wesley in the finals. Uh, anyone can win. Like I said, uh, regardless of who is playing Magnus, Magnus always has a slight edge, bec uh, edge because he's Magnus, you know. He just says, you know, if he was a, if he was a, like a, like a collectible card, he would have like a plus one because you're Magnus, you know, just like that. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Robert Arato and Sam's Giant uh, Tortoise Farm the night before Christmas. Good luck on law school finals, can be, and Benjamin Hoiberger for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, with the finals between Magnus and Wesley. Uh, thank you all. I will. We'll see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.